Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to review... Where is it? I don't even know which bottle to take, the empty one. Egoist by Chanel, or the half full one, or almost empty one, Egoist by Chanel, or the last one I bought, which is very dusty on top. You probably can't see this because this was on the shelf for quite a long time. I got this at an airport just uh, a couple of days ago, Egoist Noir. The last one I could find in this bottled version. Now, as I said in a video before, and I will repeat it for who, has, who hasn't perhaps seen the other video, uh, <clears throat> this is one of my favorite male Chanel perfumes. And um, originally it was not called Egoist. In, back in 1987, it had a very discreet launch only within Chanel boutiques, and it was called Bois Noir. Um, made by Jacques Pogue, which is the same guy who did almost all of the uh, Les, Les Exclusives uh, from Chanel boutiques like, uh, you know, Beige, Jersey, Coromandel, uh, Bel Respiro, Sycamore, and so on. I do believe Jacques Pogue is now retiring or has retired. His son is taking over and his son has made Misia, the newest of the releases of the Chanel Exclusives line exclusive to the Chanel boutiques and specialized authorized Les Exclusive dealers. This one, however, has just changed. That's why I purchased this even though this one is not finished yet. But as you can see, I use it a lot. I have an empty bottle. I never throw away the bottles. I just can't, you know, I can't throw them away. <laughs> anyway, that's just me. My hoarder in me. Um, so I have noticed, you know, at the airport that these bottles don't exist anymore. They have changed them to kind of like a lower version bottle and a smaller tap on top. So as also often is the case, whenever a big, major or minor perfume house uh, modifies the bottles, they usually reformulate the fragrance as well. Mm, some of you might disagree with me. In my personal opinion, it has changed. The I sprayed the uh, Chanel Egoist from the new bottle onto my wrist. It was just so aggressive in a nasty way. I did not like it at all. So I saw that, you know, amongst all of the new bottle packages, there was one old one left. The last, last, last one. It's so dusty on top because it's been there for quite a while. I, I bought it. I had no choice. I had to because I love the scent. I didn't know that they were changing the bottles. I don't like the new bottles. I have to add on top of that. But because if you really go back to the past and you go back to the Bois Noir that came in 1987 only to Chanel boutiques and was then really promptly discontinued and taken off of the Chanel boutique shelves because it has been then reformulated to become this baby in 1990. Uh, if you notice, that this is how the bottle looked like, more or less. I mean, well, let me see. There's a... Yeah, online... Yes, this, I mean, it was maybe <clears throat> a little bit lower, but, you know, the plastic top had this um, wooden, well, here I also the Chanel logo, but it had this wooden kind of texture to it because, guess what? The perfume was called Black Wood, Bois Noir. So they kept that on, on the Egoist bottle. Here it used to say Bois Noir, and then it had an eau de toilette written on top of the Chanel, and then it had the Paris underneath. That's also another one of the ways that you could, you know, one of the many ways you could kind of see if your bottle is a vintage bottle or not. You have the description of whether or not a perfume is eau de parfum, eau de toilette, or just a parfum. Usually on top of the Chanel inscription, that's kind of more a vintage bottle. And this, in fact, is not because we have the eau de toilette at the bottom. But that's just one of the kind of more superficial ways of seeing if a bottle is vintage or not. Anyway, back to Egoist. So apparently the story has it that, well, you know that Chanel is owned or partially owned or the major part of it is owned by the Wertheim family, uh, a German family, I believe, that um, apparently so, the Wertheim, uh, Mr. Wertheim himself, I don't know his first name, doesn't matter at this point, but anyway, um, loved this fragrance and wanted to push it up to, you know, humongous proportions global scale. So Bois Noir turned into Egoist and was launched globally in 1990 with a gorgeous commercial. Google it, YouTube it, check it out. I probably because of right reasons, copyright reasons, I can't show it to you, but just Google Egoist original ad 1990 or 1991 and you're going to see this beautiful commercial with this building and all of these women opening 
the shutters and screaming egoist, egoist, and they're all looking for this guy, this who is this gorgeous guy who's an egoist who always stays and remains behind the closed shutters and never shows up because he's an egoist. E egoist. He takes whatever he wants and doesn't give much in return, except pleasure, probably. But anyway, so the first formulation, post Boanoa, egoist, egoist, was very close to Boanoa. Boanoa itself, so I haven't smelled it myself. I haven't had the, the luxury and, you know, the luck. But one day I probably will, because I'm looking for it, I'm hunting it down. It's apparently supposed to have, you know, what the first edition of Egoist had in the, in the, in the, in the, in the base notes, uh, is what Boanoa had in the top, heart, and base notes, basically. It was much warmer from, this, from the get-go. Egoist is a bit lighter at the beginning, and then it gets deeper and sandily, and, and sweet, and, and rudy dark you know, as it develops. Boanoa would be all of that from the beginning on. So, in a way, if you really wanted to, you could say Boanoa was the parfum, the first Egoist was the Eau de Parfum, and Egoist reformulated version was the Eau de Toilette. The thing that came out now with the new bottle, I don't know how to call it yet, I just tried it on once, I did not like it, but please leave me comments in the comment section below. Let me know if you have tried the scent from the new bottle. I have read a lot of reviews online. A lot of people say it's the same scent. So I might be just totally wrong about this, but I sense something more bitey. But not in a nice sandalwoody, sweet, caramelly way. It's just headachey for me. So, 1990s, like this comes out, even the liquid is a bit darker. It's not so light like, like this one is. And... It's more intense and it's more lasting and um, more rich, if you want. Egoist was a huge success in Europe, but was an amazing, incredible flop in the States, which I can kind of understand because if you think about it, in the 90s, you know, Calvin Klein and all of the unisex kind of like transformation and revolution was going on and we had, you know, we had the, the, the CK1 and we had the Eternities and we had all those things and we had obsession and well obsession is a sweet one but it's kind of a richer more orientally smelling scent but if we follow kind of the general mood of america's scents in the 90s egoist doesn't fit within the frame at all in fact it kind of flopped it's not so easy to find this one in the states it's easier to find it in europe of course uh, but let's see, maybe the reformulated version now will appeal more to the masses or will appeal more to its time because this was way ahead of its time. It was like nothing else we have seen on the market back in the day. Um, I, let, let, you know what, let's get to the, uh, <clears throat> a little bit of to the content. So what I'm reading here um, was within Bois Noir. Boinois ingredients, let's see, mandarin, lavender, rose, uh, bourbon, vanilla, sandalwood, coriander, ambrette seed, rosewood. Hmm. And I do have uh, some a reviewer online saying that they believe that Boanoa is not that different from Egoist. I don't know. But as far as Egoist goes, let me try to get to the ingredients of it. Um, usually when you type in... And another interesting thing, whenever I kind of do a research and I type in Egoist Chanel, most of the time I get Egoist Platinum which is the follow-up to the Egoist. Also not bad. I mean, I used to wear it in the 90s as well, but um, Egoist is, is still the one for me, you know. It beats everything else. All of the follow-ups. So let's see. Okay, so for Egoist, we get top notes. Um, let's see. Let me put this here. This light is like weird. I'm losing light, people. Um, we get top notes. He doesn't want to open them. Okay, Sicilian Mandarin. All right. We get Brazilian Rosewood. Okay. We get Coriander. It's all like Buanwa. Mahogany. Middle Notes. Carnation. 
I love carnation and I do smell it quite a bit in, in egg waste. Uh, we get uh, cinnamon. I smell it too. Damask rose. Yeah, I have some rose, but I can't really distinguish if it's wherever the rose comes from. Leather, I get it just a bit in the dry down. These are base notes now, leather. Sandalwood, very present. In fact, it was said that Jacques Paul, you know, wanted to create what Ernest Beau or who for him in the 20s did for Chanel's Bois des Îles. He wanted to create the updated male version of Bois des Îles, which is supposed to be Bois Noir. In fact, Bois des Îles, Bois Noir. We're getting there. Egoist. Uh, vanilla. Yes, vanilla is very present. Tobacco. Yeah, but not that much. But I get the tobacco. Somebody said that uh, scent that they go from the new bottle smells more like cigarette tobacco and the original egg waste before the reformulation and be, you know bef before even this bottle smells more like tobacco leaves like the, the rich ones. To me, I'm, I have enough of tobacco for in this one. I don't need it to be more intense than that. Amber as well. So in the base notes. That's as far as the ingredients go. I get, as I said, almost all of them. I do sense all of them. Let's put it on, shall we? I'm wearing black and orange. <laughs> I don't know why, because I'm thinking orange. I felt wearing orange because the liquid was supposed to, you know, it was darker when in the past it was more goldy, so I could have worn something gold actually, but the orange and the black kind of combined together give me this warmer feel of what the sandalwood would give to us together with the amber and the tobacco and the base notes. Right off the bat, I mean, also, you know, every bottle has a little code at the bottom, um, kind of lasered or engraved in. I don't know if you could see it here. It says 1001. I, you know, go to some online websites that can check your codes and tell you what year that fragrance is from. If I enter Chanel and 1001, it tells me that my perfume is from October 2008. I don't know how true all of this is. I did buy this around 2009, if I remember correctly. But then my empty bottle, which I obviously bought before this one, so which I emptied before this one has a code 8031 and I checked already if I put in 8031 it tells me this bottle is from 2014. That can't be because I bought this bottle way before 2009 and this bottle. So these codes, but I have read in other websites that these codes are, you know, reading these codes is really difficult because Chanel starts repeating them after a certain time. So it could be that 8031 was a code used uh, in the late 90s, early 2000s and then it was, I don't know, I don't know what to say. So I can't really trust these online calculators for dates that perfumes were produced in. But for this one, it was correct because I did buy 2009. So it's perfectly makes sense that this could have been 2008. Even though this cosmetic thing calculator website tells me that my perfume has expired because it has a shelf life of approximately 36 months. It still smells gorgeous and amazing. It does not uh, pale to itself at all. I don't know if the longevity kind of changes, it becomes a bit more weak with time. As far as this one goes, it's not uh, silage. Of course, when you first spray the aldehydes and all the kind of artificial ingredients in it are omnipresent and a bit over potent, so they do tend to like cloy. So um, silage is intense at the beginning. It does mellow down, and as it gets, as it, start, as it starts hitting into the base notes, it gets closer to to the skin and becomes more sensual and sensuous. Um, having said that, I you know it's kind of soapy as well in the beginning, uh, but it already is kind of like the base notes from deep deep within are like saying hi. They're hinting to like hey we're gonna come soon. Wait wait for us wait for us. We just gotta pass through security control passport control customs and all that pizzazz and jazz and shiggity daz and then we're gonna arrive and you're gonna love us and the party's gonna begin because at the beginning you have to be a bit patient you really do because it, it it's not um an immediate uh pleasant scent it could be to some to my personal nose it's not like there's 
there's there's that soapy touch to it that I need to to go, you know, before. I know it's also full. But right from the get-go, it's Chanel, through and through. You know it's a Chanel perfume. There's no way of confusing it with something else. And vanilla covers up the rest. You know, there's, you, you, you sense the vanilla. And as I said in other reviews of mine, and I'm not a big vanilla fan, I consider it to be a cheap ingredient. I consider it to be an easy ingredient to kind of round things out and make things a bit sweeter or make them more accessible to, to, the, to, to the nose of people. Um, you do sense the vanilla in here as well. Uh, but, you know, to me it has something typical to, at least Europe, European 90s perfumes. There's something about it that is kind of reminiscent of what the 80s used to be as far as uh, cloying um, perfumes, go like powerhouse perfumes or power perfumes. This is kind of like a slow, you know, let's say, it's like saying goodbye to the 80s type of scent. It still has that necessity to be sexual and sensuous, but at the same time, it's it loses a bit of that artificial um, gorgeous, because I love the 80s, but that artificial creation of, of smells that we could not really associate with anything natural. You know, they were just intoxicating in a way and very interesting and amusing but they were not you know your natural scent this one has it too at least in the top notes of course it's going to take forever i don't have like half an hour 45 minutes or one hour 45 minutes to an hour to kind of let it progress and fade but um it's definitely perfume you have to wait you have to put it on at least half an hour before you leave the house if you want it to develop its maximum potential when you go outside and you encounter other people. Because right out of, you know, the, the spray, it's not, it's not what you would, it's not what most people would consider uh, a pleasant, easy scent. You have to kind of battle it out with it. Your chemistry has to kind of battle it out with Egoist. Because in fact, interestingly enough, the name Egoist, probably was chosen just out of commercial reasons because it's such a great name. But this perfume is an egoist and it's, you have to fight it. So it doesn't mean that you become an egoist, that you're the egoist, that the wearer is the egoist. It's actually the perfume that's an egoist and it's up to you to, it's up to your skin and, and your chemistry and your hormones to battle out this war against this egoist and blend it down, you know, and like, you know, tighten it up with a leash and show it who's boss because your skin is boss and you should always wear perfumes where your skin commands. Uh, so this egoist is fighting you in the beginning, which is an interesting tension, but of course eventually it loses because you're stronger and your, 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 your suppleness and, and, and all of the oils of your skin take over eventually because you keep producing them and this baby starts evaporating. So. Egoist doesn't stand a chance against you. And in fact, it's already, you know, more tamed. And the second it, this knowledge kicks in, your awareness, you know, you're becoming aware of the fact that you're taming it, you're starting to tame the perfume, you're starting to tame Egoist, that's the moment when you start falling in love with it. And that's where Jacques Polk, for me, strikes a genius chord. Because as we said, egoist is the egoist, not you, the wearer. And then eventually you win because your essential oils and everything are kept being produced and you swallow up the perfume. But the real trick is when you notice that you're starting to tame the perfume, you start loving it, right? Or I do. And that's exactly the moment where Bloop, egoist pops up again, and the egoist within its heart wins me over. So the egoist does win. Egoist wins in the end because as it starts mellowing down, I start falling in love with it, which means my defense mechanism, my guard, falls down. With it falling down, I'm completely immersed with love for egoist. And what else can I say? To each his own. 
if you do get a chance and if you are a fan of this formulation within this bottle, try to get it as long as you can find it. This was the last one I could find. Um, and at least I'm going to have a couple of years to go with it. Uh, if you, you know, if you're a fan of this type of perfumes, of kind of orientally sandalwoody perfumes that are not niche perfumes, that are not too special or too, you know, twisted in a way to, to be hyper modern because this is not modern anymore. It's, it's a specific Chanel perfume of a specific time. So it has to be understood that way as well. Uh, nevertheless, it works today perfectly, and I'm sure if they keep on making it, it's going to work in another 20 to 50 to 100 years. But uh, Egoist is definitely worth at least trying out. And then if you fall in love with the, with the older bottle, get it before it's gone. The, you know, the only reminiscence of Bois Noir is the Bois top, you know, the, the woody top, which is now also gone and the reformulated, and not, well, we don't know yet. I believe it's reformulated, but we don't know. Uh, in the new bottle version, this woody texture is gone from the stopper. You will have instead this flat plastic without the wood. So, thank you so much for watching. Enjoy your egoists. Uh, leave me comments in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about this perfume, if you already smelled it if you love it or if you hate it. Please subscribe to my channel if you like to see more. And thank you so much for watching, everybody. I love you. Take care. Bye.